somebody were to try to pinch me today, they'd probably get elbowed in the throat. Who has a better St. Patrick's Day combo than this? Just a freaking noodle. That's a fish. That's a fish. Let's go, baby. Oh, is that a fish? Oh. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video. We are out here in the Walmart parking lot, of course, on this uh, dark and dreary St. Patrick's Day. So this video is actually being filmed on St. Patrick's Day, but you guys probably won't see it for at least a day or two after St. Patrick's Day. And that's because of the whole coronavirus stuff going on. I'm sure you guys have heard about this. It's everywhere. I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to be going into a place like Walmart right now, but they are open and we need them for today's fishing challenge. As you can see, wearing the nice little Guggen green shirt and the Guggen green sunglasses. That's gonna, it's gonna help me because on St. Patrick's Day, apparently you're supposed to wear green. Like you have to have something green on or else somebody can pinch you. Now, in today's climate <laughs> with the coronavirus, and I just don't like being touched in general in public. So if somebody were to try to pinch me today, they'd probably get elbowed in the throat or knocked out of their shoes, one or the other. So that's not gonna happen because we got the green shirt on, so we are protected from any pinching. But we need to head inside for today's fishing challenge. And I'm gonna explain the rules, what we're gonna be doing. And hopefully they've got gear here still because you know people have been mobbing the stores. So I don't know, we'll see. Let's get inside. You know, one thing I did just think of is, you know, these stores have been getting just like slammed. People have been buying all the toilet paper, like all the produce, all the meats, all the groceries. I hope people have not been buying all the fishing gear out because that's not gonna work with you, boy Lojo. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Why people, just, just tell me why. You guys saw it's getting pretty getting pretty crazy down here with certain parts of the store other parts of the store look fine but i swear to god my fishing section is compromised not going to be a good day whoo okay that's a uh, major relief the fishing section looks pretty okay so that's good so for today's saint patrick's day challenge here's what we're going to do we are going to be restricted to only using green, because remember green is the color of St. Patrick's Day, green fishing gear. So that could be anything. That could be rod, that could be reel, that could be your line, could be your lures, your hooks, your, I mean, whatever, whatever you're gonna need to catch fish, you could only use green stuff. I've done these challenges a bunch of different times for a bunch of different holidays or events or whatever. You guys really seem to like them. So let me know if you want me to keep doing them. And I certainly will. There's a lot of holidays coming up in the next few months. We've got Easter, which might could be done. We have 4th of July, kind of, red, white, and blue. I don't know. You guys let me know. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoy these challenges. Anyways, let's see if we can build today's fishing gear. And we're gonna start with the rod. I always start with the rod. I don't know why. It just feels feels right. It feels like the right tool to start building with. Now, right off the bat, I'm seeing a couple things. Like this has a little bit of green camo, but that's not, it's a black rod. It's not green enough. This little guy right here, this could be an option. That's actually a green rod, very possible. Got some more rods down here with green accents, but once again, they're just not, I don't know if that's green enough. More green accents, green and white. That one's already got some green line on it. It's a different type of green and black. I think I'm gonna go back to the original green rod that I saw for multiple reasons. I mean, one, it's like, it's a casting rod. But this is the only like completely green rod from top to bottom. This is a Zebco rod, holy smokes, that's really cool. Nice little Zebco. So it looks like this is a little six foot, six inch, medium, moderate, whatever. I mean, it's really super light, it's like a freaking, it's like a worm, but it's a Zebco casting rod. So, all right, we're off to a good start. We've got some green popping off already. Now we need a green fishing reel to put on this thing. As far as fishing reels go, we are a lot more limited. They only have what's behind this case. And I'm literally only seeing like one option. <laughs> and that's that guy or basically that guy right there, which it's a white reel, which sucks because there's not just like a straight up green reel, but there's a lot of green accents on it. And it's gonna look good on that green rod. So we're gonna have to get an employee to crack this bad boy open and get that reel. Yep, that one 
one right there. Thank you so much. So there you go. That's the best we can do right there with uh, what we what we were given. But there's a lot of green on there. And although it's a completely different shade of green, by golly, we're not going for looks. We're just trying to stay within the rules of the challenge. Now we need some line for this reel, and it's not going to be hard to find green line. Oh, I'm already seeing that kind of green, that shade of green. There's probably like braid that's dark green. I'm liking the looks of this green right here just because it looks like extra festive. Now, this is big game. This is like 40 pound, 50 pound line. There's 25 pound. Um, that's probably going to be the best option. Yeah, let's do some 25 pound. Nice little super green line. That'll go nicely. That'll actually look really sick on that reel. Now we need some fishing lures. And what I typically do is get like two, three, four fishing lures, something like that. But they've got to be green today. And we're gonna have to go, we're gonna have to make these work. So we got to choose these very carefully. Definitely have to get at least one plastic. And I'm seeing a couple options here, but none of these are like super green. They're just kind of like, you know, the natural color green. We want the wabam, this kind of green, like the super fluorescent green. So this is called chartreuse pepper. But as you can see, it's a four inch mini lizard, which will be great this time of year. Lizards are a great bait in the springtime, anyways. So that color. I don't know how well the color's gonna do, but that'll be something, that'll be a good one. I know there's people out there right now that are saying, Lojo, you know, chartreuse really isn't green, but come on, in the fishing world, it's kind of like a bright neon green, so cut me some slack. We definitely have to get a hard bait too, but once again, running into the same problems, we have like kind of green stuff, but at the same time, it's not like really actual green. You know what though? I think that's, well, see, that's like, well, that's got some green on it. Like, a lot of these baits have green on them, but then they have other colors too. I don't know if that's violating the rules or not. I don't just see a straight up green hard bait. I just don't see one. Well, out of everything that I've seen, I mean, this thing looks like it, uh, it could certainly fall into the green category. It's got chartreuse on the bottom, but there's definitely some green right there. And it is a hard bait, a little square bill by Bomber Lures. I think that'll do just fine for lure number two. I'd really like to get at least one more bait, but we've got a plastic, we've got a hard bait, we kind of need something else. So I'm I'm looking like in the top water or slash like wire bait area. And once again, same problems. We've got stuff with green, like this thing right here. That looks like a really good one, but there's just all different kinds of colors. Got this little mini spinner bait right here. This thing's kind of green. I've um, got the chartreuse one with the blades painted, kind of bright green. But this is kind of, this is becoming a little bit of a chore here. I didn't realize how tough of a color green was on certain lures. Because it is kind of different than chartreuse. I say, you know what, let's just, let's just do it. Let's just do this one right here. It's got a couple different shades of green right there. But I think that should fall into, oh God, St. Patrick's Day uh, category. Lil Mr. Money. <laughs> All right. That sounds good to me. Now, unless I'm crazy, I don't think green hooks exist. <laughs> Now, I've been looking in here for a hot minute. I have seen some red hooks right there, but no green hooks. So I guess we're just gonna have to roll with a regular hook. So if anybody knows of any green hooks out there, holla at you, boy. So there you go, folks. We have the green, oh God, broke it. Green casting rod by Zebco. We have the white, but highlighted with green fishing reel. We have some green line to put on that reel. And then we have the three baits. I'm not gonna go through the three baits again because we literally just picked these out, but three pretty green, pretty St. Patrick's Day E lures. Now the goal is simple. Go out to our local fish pond. We get only using this gear right here, only using this gear. We're gonna go see if we can catch fish. Now there are some big fish moving up right now at springtime. A lot of those big females are coming out of the deep water up to the shallow water. And a few of these ponds I'm gonna fish today, I haven't fished in like a week or two. So those big fish could already be moved up and if we throw one of those lizards on a bed with a big female, she's going to demolish it. So we'll have to see how that rod and everything holds up. So let's get out to the water. Let's continue this challenge. Stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. All right, folks, made it out to the fishing spot. And I'm just kind of taking one final look at all my equipment here. And I'm feeling pretty good about everything. I'm feeling good, really good about the reel. I think it's a pretty good reel. The line, nice heavy line, just in case I hook into a good fish. I mean, lizards should work. Spinnerbait should be good in some dirty water. Square bill, I don't know, but you know. The only thing I'm really concerned about is this rod. This thing is like a noodle. Like, look how much this thing bends. It's, it's like a medium, you know, look at this super light rod so 
You know, that's the one thing. There's always something in this challenge that could fail at any second. And today, it might be the rod. This thing could snap. Uh, it could just not set the hook very well on that plastic. Whew, this is gonna be, it's gonna be a little shaky. Well, the St. Patrick's Day combo is uh, starting to look pretty gosh darn ridiculous, if I do say so myself. Who has a better St. Patrick's Day combo than this? The only question left to answer now is which lure we're gonna start with. And I think I'm gonna switch to the old GoPro to make that decision. So I'm thinking a moving bait would probably be, be good to start with just because it's still morning time. The water's kind of rippling a little bit. We got some got some wind on the water. Plus, I want to save the lizard. I want to find a big fat female bass on a bed today and toss that lizard on her bed. And I bet you she's not gonna appreciate that. So let's go with the spinner bait. It's one of my favorite lures of all time. Go ahead and get that guy rigged on up. Nothing too crazy, just a straight up 3 16 ounce, crazy colored, well, nothing too crazy, except for the crazy color and the crazy color of the line. But I'm hoping that's not going to matter on a moving bait. The color of the line, that, you know, that could screw me later on today. But with a moving bait, you'd hope it would be just a straight up reaction strike and the fish is not going to care that the line looks really weird. God, that line is so thick, I can't even get my knot to pull tight. A 25 pound big game, baby we're going after the big game today and there you go we're not going to alter it at all we're not going to add a trailer to it nothing it's going to be straight up spinner bait before we even think about catching a fish with this setup we need to make sure we can at least cast this thing so let me get my reel kind of all set up and right I need to max out my freaking drag with this really heavy line and because this rod is so limp maybe do our brakes like halfway to start with maybe and let's make our first cast Ooh. Dang, that wasn't even bad at all. That wasn't even that wasn't even bad at all. Okay, I can like loosen up the brakes a little bit. Oh boy. Okay, so now we're in here. Reels operating pretty smoothly with that 25 pound line on there. Actually, a little better than I thought it would. Okay, Mr. Spinnerbait, it is your time to shine. And God, this rod is so light, guys. I just don't know. <laughs> I don't know if this thing is gonna hold up. Man, it's gonna be fun to try though. Tell you one thing, this spinnerbait looks really good in the water already. And that is a, it's a good sign. That color really stands out in this dirty water. And of course the spinnerbait's gonna be good in dirty water anyways, or at least it should. Just have to see what kind of mood these little fish are in today. One small complaint I have right off the bat, the butt end of this rod is so short. Like look, when I put both my hands in there to cast, it's just like there's no room left. There's no more rod left to grab. So that's kind of uh, not, 100% ideal, but that's okay. We don't do these challenges to be comfortable. We do these challenges to take ourselves outside the comfort zone. You know what I mean? Ooh. I don't know if I just went over something or if that was a bite or what. Man, that felt good. Gosh. I think I may have just like popped up and over like a branch or a, a stick in the water, but holy moly, because was a, there was a double hit. That really felt like something. Oh, come on there, little guy. Come on there, betting bass. You know you're angry at this dumb looking spinnerbait. You know you want to eat it. Oh, is that a fish? Oh, oh no, gosh darn it. I think I finally like hooked the thing that I was bumping into all those times no we've only got the one spinner bait we can't lose it i do have 25 pound line though so i should be able to maybe pull it free oh yes it came off okay good 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 25 pound big game better not freaking break that easy that would be a dang shame if it did wow big swing and a miss on lure number one Oh for one, that's okay. I'm thinking if I downsize the presentation just a tad with that crankbait, but still kind of keep the moving bait vibe going on, I think maybe we can have some success. And it's okay, we still got two more lures, plenty of fish to be caught here. I'm not going to freak out just yet. I didn't even realize, but it's kind of crazy how strikingly similar these two, the two paint jobs are, you know, or the color schemes are. I mean, they're very similar. Let's hope the results are not similar. I'm also curious as to how this thing is going to cast compared to the spinnerbait. 
I think they're about the same weight, but this thing's a little bit more streamlined. It's not so big and clunky as the spinnerbait. Let's see. Oh yeah, cast fine. All right, come on, smaller profile, different action altogether, different movement. We're okay. We're we're, we're in this thing to win it. We're we're gonna be all right. It's got a pretty typical square bill action in the water, just a nice little tight wobble to it. Man, this water is super dirty over here too. These lures should be working in this really dirty water, I feel like. Oh wow, I can chuck that thing. Nice, it almost got across the pond. Let's go, baby. Gotta be a fish over there, unsuspecting. Ooh, come on. Oh my goodness. What am I getting snagged on out there? These snags are getting pretty aggressive. If those were just snags, those felt like straight up hits out there. But there could be like some brush piles and stuff that I can't see out there. I know this, this place is loaded with little brush piles, but holy moly, that felt really good. That's a fish. That's a fish. Let's go, baby. Oh, keep him down. Oh, no, we need you so bad, buddy. We need you so bad. Yes, he's barely hooked. Oh, got a water ski in. Yeah. Yes. Let's go, you little chicken butt. Look at you, tiny little freaking pale bass on the little square belly. Can't remember the name of this brand, doesn't really matter. Boom, first St. Patrick's Day bass. And I'm pretty sure this guy does not have coronavirus. He looks good, he looks healthy, he is a little pale. He didn't fight very hard. Oh, look at him though. Oh, come on, dude, are you kidding me? You just got stuck in this grass. Come on, dude, how are you this silly? Is it just because he's young and he doesn't know any better? Come on, man, get yourself free. There you go. He got out. He's good. Wow, that fish was, uh, whew, that was intense. So yeah, I'm starting to think those were not snags out there. Them, I'm pretty sure those were bites. And boom, we've got one lure down. I think I'm gonna tie the spinner bait back on just for a little bit because, you know, the moving bait bite's probably not gonna last much longer, if at all. So I'm gonna throw it around a little bit more before we switch to the, le the lizard and really try to catch that big fish today. Man, that felt so good. I knew that was a bite immediately. Knew that was a fish. Heck yes, guys. Man, I just, just one, one tiny little fish, what that can do to your psyche when you're fishing, you know? What, could that, what that can do to your confidence, you know? But I had a couple, a couple bites on that previous cast. So I'm hoping that there's a, maybe a small school of fish over here. And if that's the case, a spinnerbait would be another juicy looking lure for these fish to eat that are kind of feeding on bait fish. Whew, feeling good on this St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. God, there's so much just stuff out there. Sticks, trees, brush, grass. Oh, that's another fish. Yes, yes, come on, number two on the spinnerbait. Yes, come on, about the same size, but it doesn't matter. I knew this spot was too good to leave with just catching one fish. I knew it. Oh my gosh, look how barely this guy was hooked. Look at this, look at this. You see that little flap of skin right there, guys? Holy moly. I don't know why he's bleeding, he was hooked in the lip. But we'll go ahead and get him back in the water really quickly. Check it out, fish number two. Oh, I thought he was gonna do the same thing as the last guy did. He actually went straight back to where he was. Guys, there is like, there is stuff out here. And when you guys know what I'm talking about, oh, this is my second bird's nest of the day. When I say there's stuff in the water, like stuff that feels good, what I mean is when you cast your lure out and you're retrieving it back in, you're feeling stuff on the bottom. And, and you don't always know what it is, but you're just feeling like a little tick, 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 tick. You could be coming through some grass. You could be bouncing off logs or sticks like right there. I'm just boop, boop, bouncing off stuff. If you find areas like that in your pond or your lake or wherever you fish, concentrate on those areas because bass just relate to stuff like that in the water. But I really want to focus this last lure, the lizard, on trying to find a bedding bass and tossing this thing on the bed. So that's, that's what we're going to do. We're going to head to another spot where I can actually see in the water because you wouldn't even be able to see a bed if there was one right here. We're gonna see if we can complete this challenge with a nice size bedding bass. 
All right, let's take a look at our final St. Patrick's Day rig right here. There's our little chartreuse pepper lizard. And this is a super simple Texas rig. I mean, there's no reason to get any more complicated than this. Super light tungsten little uh, bullet weight right there. And the really important part is this small, super light wire extra wide gap hook reason being is because the lighter the wire the sharper the point normally and it just makes the penetration of the hook a little bit easier so since we've got this noodle of a fishing rod look at that thing just a freaking noodle we're gonna really need that hook penetration power so hoping that light wire hook will do it i'm hoping we can snag a three or four pound or more bass out of one of these ponds right here off of a bed this is also going to be the lure where this super bright line, it's gonna be a disadvantage for sure. Super high visibility line, the fish can probably see it. So we're gonna to have to get this lizard in the exact perfect place for it to get eaten. In other words, a lot of things are gonna to have to go right for this, for this last one to work. I'm already seeing some small bass just kind of cruising around the shallows. Not surprising for these ponds or this time of year. Ooh. God, there was one looking at my lizard just then. Oh, he's right on top of it. Cool, he's right on top of it. Ooh, that's crazy. He was looking right at it. He got aggressive with that lizard. That's actually not a tiny one. It's a pretty, I mean, it's small, but it's decent size at least. Oh, wow, this is getting some interest. There's actually a few bass that have kind of come up to investigate. Looks like the first little bed I've seen right here. And if it is, it's got a tiny little fish on it. <laughs> a tiny little male. Oh, he just grabbed my lizard. He's got it. No way. I just had the smallest male bass in the history of the world on a bed chewing on my lizard. That was great. I just really wanted to see what he would do. That's exactly what a little male bass is supposed to do. That creature or whatever gets on their bed. And man, they're not having it. That might be a little male on a small little bed right here. It's not acting very territorial. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Oh, there we go. Got a bass moving in on it. It's on a, on a bed. Oh, we just ate it. Got him. Yeah, off the bed. Let's go, guys. First bedding bass, well, that I know of, caught in 2020 a freaking lunker not exactly the size we were looking for look at the the color difference though between this one and those other ones we were catching he looked he went right back to his bed right there that was so cool flip this thing right on top of the bed and he came and he asked no question he ate it now that's not the size we're looking for not, we've we've completed the challenge for sure if we had to stop right now i feel very good saying i completed this challenge but we really wanted to catch a bigger fish. So I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm, I'm on the hunt. This is a good sign that we're already seeing bass on beds. The problem is these are males. These are the super aggressive, but smaller bass. We want the females who are two times, three times the size of those bass, but on the same beds. That's who we're looking for. Big shout out to my subscriber, Grayson, who just rode by on a tractor like a boss. Gave me a little bit of intel. He knows all these lakes and ponds in this area really well. And he told me that in one of the big ponds or small lakes over here, that there are some big bass starting to move up on beds. So I'm gonna have to make sure that in the future, very soon, that we do some actual like dedicated fishing videos, like straight up fishing, bed fishing, pre-spawn, springtime, heavy, with all that kind of stuff. So if you guys wanna see that, make sure you let me know. I really think a lot of you guys do. Hopefully you guys are like Grayson and you enjoy these challenge videos and you like the regular fishing videos too, because I like making both, to be honest with you. Ooh, there's a tiny little bass. He's tiny. Oh, 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 somebody just ate. Oh, got him. Yeah, oh, he got off. That was another little male right there. God, that is crazy how aggressive those males can be. I thought I saw a bed right there and I was just like, oh, let me flip the old micro lizard in there and he i didn't even see him i just saw the bed wowzers what an attack that guy was not playing well there you guys have it that is the conclusion for today today's video 
the all green St. Patrick's Day fishing challenge was a success. Really didn't even have any major problems. I mean, I hate to hate to jinx myself for future videos, but we didn't really have any problems with the reel. Didn't have many problems with the rod. I mean, we caught three fish in a row without losing them. We lost one, and then we caught one more. But for how limp this rod is, I'm really surprised that we only lost one fish. So all worked out. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did hit the thumbs up button, that always lets me know that you enjoy a particular type of video. If you want to see something else, the comment section is where to go. Let me know what kind of fishing challenges you want to see, what kind of regular straight up fishing you want to see. You want to see more pond fishing, lake fishing, boat fishing, kayak fishing, whatever. Just let me know and I will add it to my list. Some very big announcements coming up on this channel very soon. A lot of you guys probably already know kind of what's going on, but we're not going to announce anything until everything is official. But some big collaborations coming up, some big partnerships, if you will and everything is all good on the lojo channel i mean I, thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys for supporting me through this coronavirus nonsense and hopefully we'll be back to business as usual on youtube here really soon got the main man andrew coming back in the fold here real soon gonna be helping me film a ton of videos you guys have been really positive with your reaction to having more andrew in my videos so he'll be back on the show real soon and that's pretty much it guys i am getting out of here on to the next outdoors adventure fist bump i'm out Thank you.